Recap in minutes, in today's video, we will be enjoying an action drama war film, entitled Fury. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with a narration of Nazi forces fighting against allied countries. Then, a Nazi soldier is riding a white horse and observing the battlefield when he's jumped and murdered by Sergeant Don Collier, better known as War Daddy, during the war. War Daddy soon releases the horse and returns to the Fury tank where his troops, Boyd Bible Swan, Trini Gordo Garcia, and Grady Kunas Travis, are. Meanwhile, Bible, Gordo, and Kunas discuss their fallen buddy, Red, and then War Daddy appears and gives them an order. After a while, Private Norman Ellison approaches him and presents himself as his new bow gunner and assistance driver. Norman also says he had only been in the service for eight weeks. Thus, War Daddy instructs him to proceed to the rest of the troop but avoid getting close to anyone. Norman then proceeds and discovers the others repairing fury. The three men then question him about his army career and intimidate him. Then Kunas instructs him to clean Fury's insides. He sees the inside of a tank for the first time and begins washing the blood away, but when he sees a torn off face, he jumps out of the tank and pukes. Meanwhile, War Daddy discusses their situation with his men when the other soldiers bring an SS soldier prisoner into the camp. He angrily attacks the prisoner, but his comrades stop him. He then orders Norman to kill every German soldier he sees, but it turns out he hasn't killed anyone yet, so War Daddy gives him a gun, and Kunas teaches him how to use it. War Daddy then talks to the other soldiers about their next move, wherein he will be their platoon sergeant. After their discussion, they get up and ride out. On their way, they drive past people evacuating, and War Daddy warns them of the possibility that there are enemies among the people. Then, from the tree line, Norman detects someone but hesitates to shoot it. As a result, the enemy ambushes them, and one of their tanks explodes, where Norman witnesses a soldier burning and shooting himself to death. War Daddy immediately chases and kills the opponent, only to discover that the enemies who ambushed them are children. He then returns to Norman and scolds him for hesitating to kill the enemy. Now, Norman bears the burden of someone dying due to his carelessness. And then, War Daddy takes command of the entire platoon and begins the mission. When they reach their destination, a soldier greets them and takes War Daddy to Captain Wagoner. They then discuss the mission to rescue the captain's trapped soldiers in enemy territory. After setting up the plan, they gear up and proceed with their mission. Later, the platoon arrives at the pinned down soldiers and begins to rescue them, with tanks in front and men in the back. Then the enemy began firing at them with powerful machine guns and anti-tank weapons, resulting in a shootout. After the gunfight, Gordo reprimands Norman for not killing their enemies and orders him to shoot the opponent lying on the ground. He refuses, believing they are dead, but Gordo insists on double tapping them. He then breaks down and refuses to fight, so War Daddy scolds him, and Gordo consoles him, telling him it's all part of the war. After they successfully beat the Nazi soldiers, War Daddy confronts Norman about his faults. Norman then reveals that he has not been trained for battle but has been pulled out and transferred to Germany. Then, other soldiers capture a Nazi soldier dressed in American clothing and toys with him. War Daddy intervenes and orders Norman to assassinate the Nazis. When he refuses, War Daddy wrestles the handgun into Norman's grip, forcing him to pull the trigger. Later, Norman is traumatized as the Nazi dies with the pistol in his hand. Bible then scoops him up, and they return to the group where they tell him that, while War Daddy can be difficult at times, he's the main reason their group is solid. After that, they proceed to a neighboring town, where they come across the dead bodies of Germans who refused to fight in the war. When they arrive in town, they look for German soldiers who may be hiding. They then come across an elderly guy and ask him where the soldiers are, but he gets shot as soon as he points them out, causing a shootout. When the Burgermeister surrenders, War Daddy and his battalion effectively seize the town and liberate a group of children and women compelled to fight in battle, and then they assassinate their leader. Meanwhile, War Daddy approaches Norman and congratulates him on killing the enemies. Norman, on the other hand, reacts sarcastically. War Daddy then brings him to an office full of dead people and talks about war ideals, hoping to make Norman realize why they need to fight. When they step outside, War Daddy spots a woman peeking from the window. He and Norman rush to the woman's apartment, where they discover Irma and her younger cousin, Emma, hiding. War Daddy stays a bit, paying Irma two packs of smokes for a meal and hot water to shave. Moments later, they are ready to eat when Bible, Gordo, and Kunas barge in. They claim a woman is waiting for Norman in the tank, but when they see Emma, they realize what has occurred. Then, they, particularly Kunas, begin bullying Norman and harassing Emma, but War Daddy intervenes. All of them then share a meal when Gordo shares a story, and tension builds among them. 
War Daddy then warns them not to ruin his mealtime, but Gordo goes on with the story about how to slaughter a horse. According to him, to murder a horse, you must first befriend it and acquire its trust before killing it. Despite War Daddy advising him to stop talking, Bible and Kunas support him. Afterward, War Daddy sarcastically thanks them for the conversation, slams the table, and spits on Kunas. When a soldier arrives and calls for them, Gordo apologizes. They then receive orders to capture and hold on to a crossroad, but this mission is difficult because they have yet to determine what they will face. While preparing to leave, a German shell hits the town, exactly the house of Irma and Emma. Norman then rushes over to her, and Kunas follows. He subsequently finds Emma dead, which further traumatizes him and fuels his hatred for the Nazis. Then, Kunas tries to push him back into the tank, but he resists, so Kunas lets him punch him to vent his frustrations before moving him back into the tank. The squad then departs, and Emma's death still devastates Norman. Seeing him, War Daddy speaks to him, telling him that death is unavoidable in war. Meanwhile, on their way to the crossroads, enemy forces riding a tiger tank ambush them. While they have difficulty finishing the enemies, the enemy has taken out Sergeant Davis, Sergeant Binkowski, and their troops. As commanded by War Daddy, Fury is now having a standoff with the Tiger Tank. With him strategizing their attacks, they destroy the Tiger Tank and kill the enemy soldiers. After that, he realizes he and his troop are the only survivors again. He then tries to tell his superiors what has occurred, but he cannot do so due to radio damage. Despite being stressed and devastated, he, Bible, Gordo, Kunas, and Norman laugh it off and continue with the mission. Fury then arrives at a fork in the road but becomes stuck after walking on a landmine, so War Daddy directs Kunas and Norman to investigate a nearby building. Inside the building, Kunas apologizes to Norman. Later, they return to the squad after discovering nothing but a dead German soldier. War Daddy then orders Norman to protect them from the high ground. Meanwhile, Norman is eating when he hears something and glances back to see a battalion of German soldiers marching their way. He immediately dashes off to inform War Daddy and the others about the approaching division. When War Daddy hears the chanting of the marching enemies, he recognizes them as the SS battalion. Despite Bible's desire to escape, War Daddy insists on staying and completing their task. Still, Kunas points out that the five don't stand a chance against a battalion of adversaries. Eventually, War Daddy permits them to go, but he will stay and guard the crossroads because it is their mission. He can't just quit it as a platoon leader. Norman then decides to stay, and the rest follow. After that, they question War Daddy about his plans, and he tells them to find and burn the bodies of German soldiers. They also disguise Fury as a wrecked tank and hide within it, then they wait for the right moment to assault, considering their low ammo supply. Inside the tank, War Daddy discovers alcohol while preparing their weapons, and they have their last drink. Bible talks about the verse he always thinks about, knowing that this could be their last moment as a platoon. War Daddy then recited the book and chapter where his favorite verse originated. During their conversations, they also give Norman the war nickname machine because, according to Kunas, he's a fighting, murdering, and sex machine. Machine then notices the enemy approaching their tank and alerts the others. Opponents start to surround Fury, and as one of them opens a hatch, Machine shoots him, and the fighting begins. They start throwing grenades and blowing up their trucks, and then they also blow up a building where many German soldiers are hiding. The German soldiers then begin to fire back. Still, under War Daddy's guidance, the five aim to gain an advantage, killing many enemy soldiers. Moments later, they run out of ammo, so War Daddy intends to leave to fetch some and orders Gordo and Machine to cover him. They toss smoke grenades and pop through their hatch to cover War Daddy while he grabs the ammo, and as soon as he finishes collecting, he orders them to get back inside. He is about to return inside as well, but opponents manage to climb up the tank, so he fights them off but is shot in the process, fortunately, the wound is not fatal. Bible then bandages his injury, and they discuss another Bible verse. On the other hand, German soldiers pull out their Panzerfaust and attack relentlessly. There is a brief silence echoing around, and both troops are careful with each other, especially the battalion of War Daddy, because they have limited ammo left. Then, the enemies start shooting them with Panzerfaust, and they counterattacks. An enemy blows a hole in Fury's side, killing Kunas, and causing Bible to cry in agony. However, War Daddy orders him to straighten up because they are still in the middle of the war. The four battle by shooting and tossing grenades at the German soldiers, but they eventually run out of ammo, leaving them with only their hand weapons and Fury's .50 machine gun. The Nazi soldiers, on the other hand, are aware that they are running out of bullets and intend to kill them off. Back to Fury, 
the four prepare to get out, and a shootout breaks out again, so War Daddy takes place in the machine gun while the others are with their weapons. Later, when Bible runs out of bullets, he goes outside to borrow one from a dead enemy. Meanwhile, Gordo is preparing to throw a grenade when he gets shot, causing the grenade to fall off inside the tank. He then uses his body to contain the explosion, protecting War Daddy and Machine. Outside, the Nazi whose Bible attempts to steal his weapon is still alive and holds him down. He is about to get attacked by another enemy when Machine shows up and saves him. The two get back inside the tank when the enemies throw smoke grenades. Then, an enemy carrying a sniper crawls carefully and approaches Fury. War Daddy then asks Bible for a grenade as he fights off invaders, but as soon as Bible emerges out of the hatch, he's shot. The sniper shoots again and hits War Daddy. Trying to secure the kill, he reshoots him, but War Daddy manages to get into the tank. Inside, War Daddy and Machine talk sincerely, Machine admits that he's scared and wants to surrender. Yet, War Daddy tells him that they will torture him to death. Outside, enemy soldiers swarm the tank and drop a grenade inside. Machine rushes via the tank's bottom hatch and covers himself with mud. When a German soldier spots him, he silently begs for his life, which the soldier does. The following day, he hears a white horse passing by, and he gets back inside the tank and covers the dead body of War Daddy. And then, he hears noises outside, so he gets War Daddy's revolver and prepares to fight. But he's relieved to see that the one who opens the hatch is an American soldier. They then declare him a hero and bring him to an ambulance. The movie ends with an image of Fury, substantially damaged, with dead bodies of German soldiers scattered around and Norman Ellison, now known as Machine, as the sole survivor. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos like this, and help the channel grow.